Hi. Uh, welcome, everyone. My name is uh, Sergei Shishkin. I work for Terralytics, which is a data science company in Singapore and Zurich. Uh, and we use, we started using Docker quite a while, but for small things. And recently, I started using it more for uh, deployment. And previously, we did a lot of things with uh, Ansible. We're still using Ansible uh, extensively. But uh, more and more, I find uh, ways where um, I, as a developer, as an engineer, not as an operation person, uh, can build something which is uh, easy to deploy and also complex uh, in, in a way that it can be uh, deployed in a cluster environment, not just, just a small single application. Uh, and I discovered for myself uh, a tool uh, outside of just the single Docker uh, executable, which is Docker Machine. I'm not sure if you, uh, if anybody of you are familiar with it. Um, did anyone try to run Docker on Windows or Mac before Docker for Mac came out? Yeah, so you probably used the Docker Machine. So uh, back in the time, um, and there is still uh, no uh, kind of native native support in uh, outside of uh, Linux world for uh, for Docker. Uh, so everything outside of Linux has to be somehow virtualized. And uh, previously, it was a virtual box on either Windows or Mac, uh, where you would have uh, something that manages a virtual box, a virtual machine is able to install Docker there. And then you have this somewhat seamless uh, integration, but you still have to care about IP addresses and stuff. Uh, and networking is, is a huge pain in, in this scenario. Then Docker uh, for Mac and Docker for Windows came out. And uh, I thought, oh, now I don't need Docker machine anymore. Uh, I can just use Docker executable, and I'm fine. Uh, and it was, of course, as promised, a very, very nice uh, product. Um, but then I figured out that, well, if I want to run my application locally on my Mac, for example, test it in a Docker environment, and I want to deploy it somewhere, um, how do I do it? And the most straightforward way uh, for us, uh, at least with, uh, with Ansible deployments, was to, uh, OK, so we provision our servers with with Ansible, and Ansible was re would be responsible for running a Docker daemon um, uh, for pulling proper images, for starting Docker applications in the daemon, or we would use, uh, we actually don't use Swarm uh, yet or any, any type of uh, uh, Docker uh, cluster management, unfortunately. Um, but I look forward to, to hear about that and, and, and use it as well. Um, and Docker machines seem to be quite interesting. So uh, I'll demonstrate uh, how you can use Docker machine in your workflows and, and Docker Compose as well a bit. Who is familiar with Docker Compose? Who is not familiar with Docker Compose? OK, I see. <laughs> That's the trick. Um, so Docker Compose uh, is an additional uh, tool in the Docker uh, toolbox, which is a ch separate tool written in Python and automates things around Docker. Uh, and what it does, it, it helps you um, build applications out of multiple services that compose together. That's why it's called Compose. And it solves uh, linking of containers in this virtual Docker network. It creates a network. Uh, it also creates volumes for your, uh, for your containers under the hood. So that it's even if you don't have, if, even if you don't need multiple containers, uh, even if you just have one container which you want to run uh, locally or remote, um, it's still uh, a great way to get rid of this huge Docker executable command lines where you specify all, all, all the flags by uh, basically including them in the, 
in a Docker Compose file. So uh, a basic Docker Compose file looks like this. You specify your services. In this case, there are two, Web and Redis. Uh, a Web is built out of a Docker file, which is in the local uh, directory. That's what the dot uh, uh, for build uh, specifies. It exposes a port 5000 on a port 5000 on a host machine. Uh, uh, it exposes a volume or maps a volume, uh, actually two of them. Uh, it links to Redis container. Uh, there is a Redis service as well built out of a public Redis image, the latest version. Uh, and so that, that's uh, all you need to, to have this application, web application using Redis. So you, you start it with Docker Compose, and, and you have Redis, and you have web application. They can talk to each other. Redis is not exposed outside of your uh, specific uh, Docker Compose network. Because for, for each application, Docker Compose will create a separate network. Uh, and unless you expose any ports, they will not be exposed outside. Uh, but every container in the composition can still talk to, uh, to every other container, uh, which is very nice. Uh, so what we'll take is we'll take uh, the Docker Compose example, which is a bit of an involved example. It's a voting app where you can vote for dogs or cats. Um, so it has a voting app. It's a Python web application um, which accepts votes, uh, publishes them to Redis. Then there is a uh, Redis is a standard Redis uh, container. Then there is a worker service, which is written in .NET, uh, which listens on Redis updates and uh, uh, updates the results in Postgres. And then there is a a Node.js application which uh, pulls uh, Postgres database and displays the results. And it's a bit reactive, so it actually works in almost real time. But I didn't look into the source code much. That's what uh, Docker is for. Um, so this is how the, the Docker Compose for this particular application looks like. So there is a vote uh, application, again, Python, built from, from source, uh, has volume, has ports. Uh, there is Redis, um, exposes a port. Um, although it's not strictly necessary, if you would omit this line, everything would work just fine. Uh, there is worker, there is DB, uh, and the result application is a Node.js. <coughs> So, yep. So I've cloned the application here, <coughs> and the normal way you would use Docker Compose is by just saying Docker Compose up, and it will figure out everything it needs, pull the necessary images, build the necessary images, uh, update any applications. Uh, uh, run them, and you see this. Uh, so if you run it with an uh, interactive terminal, so without the dash D flag, without the detached mode, uh, it will attach to the logs. And you see on the left, it denotes which uh, log line comes from which service. Sometimes they can be messed up, but uh, uh, unless you have ASCII art like Redis, it doesn't really make any difference. So. Here is the application running. Let's actually go and check um, how it looks like. Uh, yes, it was port 5000. Yeah, so we have this application. Uh, we can vote for cats and dogs and on the port 5001 is the result yep so you actually see if I change my mind it updates automatically so very simple 
stuff. Now, uh, I'm an enterprise developer, and I want it to be deployed in the cloud. <laughs> How do I do that? Um, here's one way. Um, because Docker has this detached architecture that uh, uh, Docker daemon exposes a REST API, which the Docker command line is actually talking to. So the Docker executable that you're running on your command line is actually a REST client, which sends commands to uh, a specific server. And then the server executes the commands and uh, sends the results back. Um, and this architecture allows for very easy uh, remote Docker management. And that's exactly what Docker Machine does. So now I have um, an EC2 instance uh, running on Amazon Cloud. So there is nothing specific to AWS. So Vincent will talk about how uh, AWS-specific integration is done. For these purposes, what I need is I just need some remote server with SSH connection. So what I do, uh, yeah, so this is the SSH connection here. Um, what I do is, let me stop this instance here and show you what I have in Docker Info. Uh, so if you look carefully, you see that uh, in this particular uh, Docker instance, my operating system is Alpine Linux, which is the, the host uh, operating system that the small hypervisor on uh, Docker for Mac is running. Um, so this is what happens when, when I run it locally. Now this is a totally different uh, case because uh, previously I've created a Docker machine here. So I'll show you <coughs> what I have here. So I have uh, a test Docker host, which is running. Uh, and I've created it the following way. So Docker Machine supports provisioning or provides provisioning of uh, Docker hosts on <coughs> remote machines. And it has several providers. So one of them is generic. You see uh, driver generic here. Uh, for that provider, all is necessary is to specify the IP address. Uh, in this case, it's DNS uh, identity. Uh, provide SSH user, provide SSH key, and name, name the machine. Uh, and it will uh, go and create it. Um, I'll spare time of not showing how it does it. It does it. I just did it five minutes ago. So now, um, well, let me show it this way. So now I can have an environment uh, that is needed for me to use this, um, this uh, Docker instance. Uh, so if you run Docker machine and, uh, and then the name of the machine, it will uh, write all the exports which are needed. And then if I evaluate them, then my environment, my command line, now is able to talk to the remote Docker daemon. So I do that, and uh, I guess it's still running. Uh, sometimes it might be a bit flaky. But if I run Docker Info, uh, you see that operating system there is, is Ubuntu, which is the uh, AWS instance I've created. So now I can run just normal Docker stuff here, uh, see which images I have there. And it's really the same Docker experience you have 
locally with a remote machine. Um, but we're interested in Docker Compose. So the same way I can Docker Compose up this application in the cloud or on the remote machine. So actually the yeah. Hope it does work. Do you need to open the pot? Uh, yeah. The security code. Security code. Yep. I think they should be open. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I tested it at home and uh, for security reasons. <laughs> oh, yeah, now it works. So you, you have to set the ports yourself, right? No, no, it's uh, uh, just firewall on uh, AWS. Yeah, but it was done by you. You can only do it uh, via AWS, or you can do it uh, all the AWS uh, command line tool? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, it's not done by the car machine. No, 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 no. It's uh, nothing Docker specific Not or Docker related. Um, yeah. So the same stuff here. Uh, go to five thousand one. Yep. So um, beyond that, mm, let me stop this. Um, Docker machine supports um, regenerating certificates. So uh, what it actually does, uh, when you specify certificate uh, the uh, private key the first time you connect to it, it will create a certificate. You need to open the port that the Docker daemon is listening on, or actually which the, the REST uh, API uh, will work through. Um, it's uh, secured with a certificate, uh, client is authenticated by <coughs> certificate as well, which is why the, the regeneration is needed. Um, so it's not anyone who knows the address of your machine is able to talk to your Docker host on, on that machine, of course. Um, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Before, yes. <laughs> yeah, OK. Uh, yeah. Um, so you have one active Docker machine per your terminal session, which is which is obvious, uh, and the rest uh, is uh, so. When you actually do Docker machine create, so you see a lot of options uh, um, around Swarm as well. So I didn't test it. Uh, I hope it works. <laughs> uh, it will be really interesting. Um, but so now, uh, how I see our deployment strategy evolving is that uh, we will still use something like Ansible to provide like, the, the foundation of uh, the infrastructure um, to well install uh, the patch level of operating system and everything like that. Uh, and then, um, when a new machine comes into fleet, uh, it will be provisioned by, by something like Docker machine, uh, it can come into a swarm, uh, and then from there on, uh, we can have automation on uh, continuous integration or continuous deployment where Docker itself is used to, uh, to publish applications and uh, upload applications. Um, so if you're interested in uh, Docker Compose, it's also a very powerful tool. It's basically almost the same command set as you have for normal Docker, but no low-level stuff, because you're not talking about things like 
volumes and networks anymore. You've specified them in your composition file. You are talking about uh, services and, and applications. And then you manage them with, with the, this command set. All right. Do you have any questions? That's, that's all I have. Oh, yeah. Before we go there, uh, we're doing some interesting human behavior analytics, uh, and we are hiring. So if what I've just uh, explained to you is nothing new to you, and you know more, then you definitely should talk to me. <laughs> yeah, questions? Different containers running. So how do you aggregate log? hmm? logs? Logs. Logs from different containers. How do you have a aggregation from different containers? So you have the standard Docker log uh, collection from standard out. Okay, Th that is Docker containers logs. But how about the application logs? Because each one will have a in the scale oh. things up. Yeah, so multiple containers spawning. So in that case, I need a centralized repository where I can collect application logs. It's not containers logs, but mm -hmm. application logs. I see. Well, if your applications log on standard out, then your application logs become just container logs. And usually in a container, you shouldn't have more than one process anyway, so more than one application. Uh, so there shouldn't be anything beyond your application running in that particular container anyway. Um, that's one way. Um, if you are fancy, you might look into something uh, like uh, Greylog or Elk, where you can even deliver logs by UDP or TCP. Uh, that will work the same. And probably the least preferable option, I would say, is um, just mount a volume and log there. But then you have to well manage all those volumes and log files. and. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can mm. add something. So uh, in Docker, there is the concept of log uh, plugins, like log providers. Mm -hmm. So what you mentioned about Greylog, there is a plugin. So basically, you just need to run a, a, a Greylog um, kind of server or plugin daemon. And then the, the Docker uh, engine will then, um, you know, if you, if you tell your container needs to use that plugin, then the engine will, will integrate your container with that plugin. Yeah. So it will automatically get sent there. So your logs are then. Uh, going through a log forwarder and then centralized, tagged, however you want. One of yeah. the trade-offs, however, I see is that um, if you log to standard out, then all your logs become text. So you basically have just lines. Uh, and then Docker will take those lines and log them. And then on gray log, you will have to somehow parse them back. However, uh, if you have specific libraries for uh, gray log data f uh, data log format, then you can uh, log structured uh, log events from your application. And then I would go with the networking option where you just directly send them to to the collector from within a container. Any other questions about Docker Machine, Docker Compose, anything you want to see? Sorry, I just missed it a little bit at the beginning. The you were clarifying how you get to talk you were using Docker Machine instead of using um, Docker for Mac. Oh, uh, so before Docker for Mac came out, uh, Docker Machine was a way to use Docker on non Linux environments. So, where um, you would use, so Docker Machine has uh, different providers. Uh, machine driver. So these are all the drivers that it supports. And one of them is uh, VirtualBox. So you would just Docker machine create driver VirtualBox something, and it still works. Okay. And the and then after that, you're, you have a greater level of control than if you're using Docker from that. Uh, no. Uh, after that, uh, your Docker command line is pointing to the REST API, which is hosted in the virtual box that uh, Docker machine provisioned. Um, but then you run in, it works. It, it's actually a very, very nice solution. But you run into issues where you, for example, you read some, some guide uh, on, on how to use Docker. 
um, it says Docker compose up, you run it and says, oh, go to localhost port 5000, and it's not on localhost because it's on the IP address of your virtual machine. So you need to be careful with that. And the networking is a bit more complicated in this scenario. Uh, what else you have to do? Uh, so we saw that you need to adjust the ports so that it's open. What else do you need to do? Or what maybe Ansible is have to do to uh, yeah, so setup. on the port side, um, so 2376 is what uh, Docker uh, is listening on. So you need to open that when, when you provision with Docker machine. Uh, everything else is uh, Docker machine taking care of. Y you can read the, the uh, generic driver documentation to, to see which operating systems are supported. Not all of them are supported, but most of them are supported. But Docker Machine will even install Docker on, on your host. So really, I just created uh, bare bones Ubuntu instance, and that's it. Nothing nothing more. Uh, so normally you put one application per instance. So instance. in this case, you put three applications on one, one instance. Oh. Um, I wouldn't say you necessarily put one application per instance. And again, like things like Swarm uh, and Kubernetes and all those clustering solutions are about making containers portable, so it doesn't really matter on which instance they run. So if, if instance has enough memory, why not put more containers or less containers? It's one service per container, yeah. but you yeah. can put as many containers as you can on one instance. Uh, Docker Compose has a scale capability, mm -hmm. so I can scale more, more than one in one instance yeah. per, uh, like per service. Um, how does that work with app? Does it do its load, ba load balancing? How does it know which one to forward the request uh, to? Or do you have to do that manually? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, you have to do it manually in the sense that Docker doesn't, as, my, uh, as far as my understanding goes, doesn't provide you anything around that. What Docker Compose will do, it will just create more um, container instances. Um, they will have their own host names. They will expose their own ports. Uh, so that's why you have to be careful how you map the ports on the host, whether you map them at all. Uh, and you can use solutions like uh, HA proxy, uh, and the one is even um, I saw one which supports when it runs in Docker, and you say to it, "Oh, you need to monitor these containers; it will be able to to resolve them." In some, yeah. So, um, in the legacy mode of Docker Compose, or in the legacy Docker networking, um, there is no no service discovery or anything like that. But in the newer version of Docker Compose, version 2, um, when you create networks, uh, the Docker engine actually exposes a DNS resolver inside the container on port 111, or uh, some port, I don't remember the exact port. But it, it means that um, if you connect a container to a network and you scale it out, uh, all of those containers can be found uh, via DNS round robin. Oh, that's cool. So you can actually, with Docker Compose stack locally, uh, create like a full load balancing solution with DNS round robin uh, on uh, like uh, Docker uh, networks. But you need to specify the Docker Compose version 2 and you need to specify uh, special networks and your container should not connect to the default Docker bridge but they should connect to the networks. Mm -hmm. And then you use networks to isolate uh, the layers but you have DNS round robin uh, cool. there. So like I, I like sometimes I want to recreate a complex situation on Amazon where I have an ELB that does uh, TLS termination. Then I have uh, my Node.js server uh, and I have like an Nginx load balancer in front of it or something like that. Or a reverse proxy <coughs> Nginx where I have virtual hosts. Mm -hmm. So I can simulate the whole environment using uh, Docker Compose locally um, with, with TLS termination and uh, upstream uh, DNS round robin across hosts. So I'm able to test and change my Nginx configuration and see if it's going to work or not, like how are the proxy forwarding headers. And so far, I've been able to reproduce very complicated setups just locally on my laptop. Cool. 
So does this use a Swarm or something or is it different? Because Swarm, I, based on my understanding, Swarm is actually for clustering, uh, which is making it more elastic. Like so this... this does it use a Swarm? What I showed didn't use Swarm, but Swarm is supported. So it's what... what coming in second yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but again, so what you get with Docker machine is uh, provisioning of a Docker host on a remote machine uh, and then redirecting your local environment so that your Docker command line tools now can talk to that remote Docker daemon. And then everything, all, all other tools that built on top of Docker will work just seamlessly. Well, uh, unless they make any assumptions on IP addresses or uh, local volumes or things like that. I guess we should... Uh, Go to the next. Uh, there's more questions. The questions are important. Yeah. Maybe we can see the questions after I first one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to see. Okay. 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 Yeah. Thanks. Thank yeah, you. Thank you.